Hello everyone, this is Gail, and I have been challenged, I'll use that word, by my sister. Um, somebody bought my sister these earrings, and they're like, they're Plumeria, and this one, uh, the, pe the mate to this one broke. And she was asking me if I could make Plumeria earrings in any color. So I thought I would give it a try. Uh, I don't know. I'm not real good at um, working with tiny little things. This I can see doing the cane. If you look at it real closely, it looks like it is a blue to white to yellow Skinner blend and then it's wrapped in white um, before it's reduced. I just don't know that I can work on anything quite this small but I'm going to give it a shot. So I'm just going to leave this here for my preference and I've rolled out some white and some yellow and some blue and I'm going to cut a square from each one and I really don't need a whole square here I'm just going to cut a little piece and I'm making I'm doing this in very small because as you can see I could make a cane out of this and slice it and come up with all kinds of um, all kinds of, um, what am I trying to say? Petals. Oh, you know, oh. So I'm going to cut these diagonally and fold these over on themselves so that you have two thicknesses thick. And this is all done on the thickest setting of my pasta machine. And I'm going to offset that just a little because I am going to want some true white at the bottom. I'm going to trim that off and trim off the little point from the blue. This blue, by the way, um, I don't have any turquoise clay or you know anything like that. So what I did is I took some um, denim and added some peacock pearl and I don't know if you can tell the difference probably not on camera but this has got a lot more green in it but it kind of made a pretty turquoise color so I've got that together and then I'm going to cut just a sliver of yellow actually I'm, I think I'm going to do the whole I apologize if my hair got in it I'm still making adjustments to my camera And I forgot that's got to be two thicknesses thick. Let me take that away. Let me cut this in half and stack and then cut. There we go. And I'm using sunshine instead of the cad yellow just because sunshine is a softer yellow. And I'm going to roll this through the pasta machine about 20 or 30 times and come up with a Skinner blend. And I'm not going to have you watch. I've got other videos that show how to do Skinner blends. I believe I even have a separate video on how to do Skinner blends. But I am going to uh, stop the camera, do my blending, and then I'll be back. Hi everyone. I just uh, was thinking as I was doing my clay plumeria that I never explained to you anything about the plumeria flower. So I thought I would show you some pictures. Um, this one here is like the one I had on at my house. Let me see if I can. There's a bigger picture. But that's... Uh, the plumeria that like I had at my house, excuse the ads. 
Oh, no, I don't want to join you. But anyway, um, they're also called frangy panty. Uh, frangy panty is probably more of a um, more of a technical name. Um, but there's the white. Let me bring this back down. There's another white there. There's a, um, this shows more how these petals overlap each other. These have a little bit more yellow on them, but as you can see, there's all different colors. And uh, here's a pink and white with the yellow. There's yellow and white with just a tinge of pink. But these are the flowers that Hawaiians uh, make into their lays. They string their cord through the center here and they smell wonderful. If you've ever had any plumeria um, perfume or body spray or whatever, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what the plumeria look like. Um, I th was hoping there, there's one, there's a lay right here. You can see that. Let me see if I can move, I can't move it up any, but this is the where you can see the white one that it's strung through the center of the of the flower. Of course, this one is fabric, but this shows you how they make the. Um, the flowers, of course, like I said, this is fabric, but they would take the real flowers and make them into a lay. But that's just some of the things that I wanted to show you exactly what a plumeria was. I know a lot of you have never heard of it or you never heard of frangy panty or whatever. Um, here's some that were made into hair clips, it looks like. But they're just really nice to have. Let me get rid of this. That one's got just a tinge of blue on the edge. You can do them in just any color. So just wanted to give you an idea of just what a, uh, a plumeria was and all the different colors that they come in. So I hope you enjoy this. Okay, here is my blend. And it probably could have been blended a little bit more, but I wanted to leave this white here above the yellow. Now, because I want this to be on the bottom of my cane, and this to be on the top, I'm gonna to have to run this through the pasta machine. And I had it on a pretty thin setting. I'm gonna fold this into thirds. And run it through this way, make it a little bit longer. There you go. So now it's a little bit longer, but I think I want it even, any, even thinner. So that was on a th number three setting. I'm going to go down two more settings to a number five and run it through one more time. Now because this is a small cane. I probably could have gone even thinner, but I'm going to leave this the way it is. I do believe I'm going to cut off this tongue here. And I'm going to do a little fan fold, and I want to make it a pretty small one. Actually, let me do it this way. I'm going to just maybe a quarter of an inch And I'm just fan folding this, which is going to give me the gradient between the yellow to the white to the blue. And hopefully there will be more blue than the other colors. Now on a bigger fan fold, I usually 
leave it on here and just take the clay, this strip of clay, and go back and forth. But with this being so skinny, I think I'm going to just continue to do it this way. I'm, I'm still experimenting with my camera, so hopefully my hair is not in the picture anymore. Um, I am in my new craft room, and I'm still working on logistics, or whatever you want to call it. But... I did move my camera. It's at a slightly different angle than my last few videos. And uh, I think the rest I can kind of do in my hands. But I'll, I'll keep tweaking. If you have any suggestions or I don't hate to call them complaints. Let's just leave it at suggestions. Okay, so that's where that little tongue is starting. Just going to cut that little tongue off. Now you see I have a gradient between the yellow to the white to the blue. And I'm going to compress that. As I compress it, it's getting longer, which is what I want. And when I get this to where it's almost a square, I'm going to turn it into a round. All right, that's it. So now it's, see, it's a square, or almost a square. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press opposite corners. I'm going to press these corners in. Then I'm going to press the other two corners in. And this should help me get it almost round. It's round enough that I can roll it. And let me show you what I've got. See, that, that's what I have now, and this is the size it needs to come to. But you see where it's yellow on one side and blue on the ends. But before I do anything else, I need to wrap this in white. And I just need a very thin white. So let me roll this out really thin, and then I'll be back. Okay, now this is rolled out on the number 7 on my pasta machine. 9 is the thinnest. So this is still two settings below the absolute thinnest. But it was beginning to ripple, which it does. When you get this thin, it will start to ripple. But as you can see, you can lay it on your table and... and uh, smooth it out. So I am going to... It's not really long and wide enough. And I don't know. Let me just start here. It might be wide enough to go this way. Let me try it this way. Let me smooth it back out. I'm just going to lay this on there. Get it started. And just roll it. 
till it makes a mark. See, when you make the mark, it comes almost perfect. If I'd been right inside of that mark, it would have been better. But what I'm going to do is just shave off this little bit of extra right here. And this little bit of extra right there. If it hadn't been so small, I would have been able to see that a lot better. But I don't want any white ridges on this. So let me roll it. And I'll cut off an end. And you see this can be, this is eventually going to be this. See how much I've got to reduce it? But I didn't want a big thick white around it. So now I'm just going to start reducing. Let me put my colors out here separate from the rest of my clay. So I'm just going to stretch and roll and stretch. Try to make sure you keep your yellow. I should have left a registration mark so I would know where my yellows are supposed to be. I think before I go too small, I'm just going to see how I do with this before I get started. I'm going to make one a little bit bigger. Let me pinch where the yellow is and pinch where the yellow is. So I know that that should be about the same place. But I'm just going to slice very thin slices just to see if I can do it. And there is five petals on this plumeria. So what I thought I would do is take a piece of this scrap, just a small one, and make a little ball. And let me get a piece of uh, patty paper. I'm going to press this down on my patty paper. But first off, um, I'm going to need to shape this a little bit. If you look at these petals, see how they're a little roughly around the edges? Now this part I can do after I start putting them together. I can just roll those up, but they're just a little roughly looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first I'm going to shape, reshape these because they're not really shaped well, when I sliced them, they, well, actually that pretty much ruffles them a little bit, but I'm going to use my rubber tool just to kind of roll the edges a little bit, or at least on one side. If you hear that noise in the background, that's my dog. He has a new toy. Actually, I don't think this is going to work because I'm going to need to pinch this at the bottom. So let me just try doing this. I'll just make sure that's the bottom of the yellow. Just put it in your hand. If you have a little texture, little 
clay shaper, a rubber one, something gentle. You could use a ball tool. Just something, but just if you use a ball tool because they're metal, you just need to be real careful with it. The good thing about the plumerias is they don't have any texture in the leaf, so I don't have to, or in the petal, I don't have to um, worry about putting any veins or anything. The plumeria I had in my house in Florida was white with the yellow center. And I'm planning on doing a white one, but I just thought since hers had this pretty blue, I would start with blue and then I'll go with another color. But you can see this is going to be way too big, so these petals need to be a lot smaller. And I don't do well with small. So I'm going to put that together. And what I'm going to do is pull these around and just kind of pinch this middle. Of course, I'm not pinching it very well. And I ended up flattening out my petals. I find I work better in the palm of my hand when I'm trying to curve something. And then, let's see, I might use a small ball tool. to push here in the center because I need to get a good pinch here in the center. But this would be, this is of course my first try. It's nowhere near as pretty as this one, but I'm getting close. I do have the colors. I just need to figure out how to form these leaves. And of course it needs to be a lot smaller. So I'm just going to keep One good thing about pinching the center is it helps give me something to hold on to. I think I need to place my petals a little bit better. Because this one is too long, but I'm thinking if I can pinch just that petal. Let me find a larger ball tool where this one. Maybe if I left it on here, so I'm going to keep trying. I think this would work but it's just got to be a lot smaller. So I'm going to reduce this down some more and just see if I'm going to be able to do this or if it's just way too small for me to handle. Be right back. Okay. 
Okay, I have done a little bit smaller one, which is smaller than the first one I made, but it's still not as small as this one. So I still have a lot of reducing to do. So let me go reduce this some more and I'll be back. Hi, while I'm waiting for the other uh, petals to bake, I thought I'd go ahead and make a pink cane, the pink to white to yellow, and I'm going to wrap that, and I thought I would show you about a registration mark. And What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of the yellow and lay it on the edge of my white clay. Let me just trim off this edge because I don't need that. And I'm not going to need all that. But what I'm going to do, see this comes just about to the center, and I'm going to go around, and make my mark, and come back, and I'm going to come inside maybe an eighth of an inch. So that it will leave a thin little stripe there of the yellow. And that way when I reduce it, I'll always know where the yellow is, the center of the yellow. And that will help me keep my cane straight. So I just thought I would show you that. Um, I'm going to reduce this down pretty tiny like I did the other one. And um, I'll, I'll be back when the others are done. I don't know what I did with my blue cane. So I guess I'm going to use my pink cane. Where would I have put it? I know I worked on a card. I had a lot. We've had a loss in the family and I had to abruptly stop yesterday when I started this and things are just kind of not in their right places right now but I'm gonna go and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the pink one See, there's the pink one I made. Maybe if I don't try to make it so small I can do a better job with it. So I'm pinching the yellow together to make it a petal shape. Kind of bending it over my finger a little bit to give it some depth. This one didn't get quite as much as the other one. And let me see if it has anything whatsoever to do with the fact that it's tiny and that's why it's not working. Not that this one is much bigger, but it's a little bit bigger than those itty bitty little things. Now, since this is raw clay, I won't need any liquid clay.
and it's going together so much easier. And I'm just using the point of a ball tool to adhere it to this little mound of clay, that I, the little circle of yellow clay. Press a little bit larger ball in the center. Now, see if I could do this, and a smaller version, it would be perfect. How's that for a little pink plumeria? Now what I would do is I would go ahead and bake this and then glue the little thing on the back. That's why I needed something there, so I'll have something to glue this to. And I would have some plumeria earrings. So I'm going to keep practicing in my spare time to see if I can do the same thing with the little ones and I will just go from there I'm not going to bore you any longer with my trials and tribulations of making a plumeria earring but I think that's really cute so thanks for being patient with me and and bearing with my trials and tribulations of plumeria making. So I hope you like this. Come again soon for another polymer clay tutorial. Bye-bye.